a masterpiece that nearly cost the life of its master. It was a very serious decision. After all, it is a masterpiece that glorified the artist all over the world. The St. Vladimir Patriarchal Cathedral was built over 30 years. It was painted and decorated over another 11 years. Architects planned to build the cathedral as a holy sanctuary, a shrine equal to Constantinople's St. Sophia Cathedral. Unfortunately, only 10% of the work was done. A golden background, dark blue, almost black, clothing of the Virgin Mary and the Divine Child, Jesus, adorned in white. The first large image which people see entering the cathedral is the Blessed Virgin Mary, located in the apes above the main altar. This is the image of the Mother of God with the Divine Child. This is a monumental image, the mural painting, on which were earlier called frescoes. The same technique was used in the Kiev Sophia Cathedral with water paints. Exactly this image was created with oil paints. The 10-meter composition is so captivating but technically difficult. The Virgin Mary is within pale pink morning clouds, illuminated by the sun. Her look is pleading, mourning, and at the same time forgiving. She was foretold that her son would be divine, but that sinful and evil people would kill him. She knew it would happen so, that's why she's so sad and her face is grim. The Divine Child Jesus extended his hands out to the world. It looks as though the infant Jesus wants to hug everyone, even those who will crucify him. Such a complex, yet at the same time charming and beautiful idea of the greatest image in the St. Vladimir Cathedral. Viktor Vatsnetsov managed to give the image a unique effect just with a few skillful strokes. He tore the Virgin from the flat walls of the cathedral and raised it over the people. Vatsnitsov, the mother of God with the infant Christ, is the most famous masterpiece. The main temple of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Kiev Patriarchate, the St. Vladimir Cathedral, was built almost half a century. Passions and rumors accompanied the construction of the cathedral. Ukraine was a part of the Russian Empire in 1852. Preparations for the 900th anniversary of the baptism of Kiev Rus continued. Authorities suggested the Kiev Metropolitan Filaret consecrate monument to Prince Vladimir. Later, it was installed on the present-day Vladimir's Hill. In truth, the Metropolitan did not like sculptures. He was sure that they were not characteristic of orthodoxy. He didn't even come and consecrate the monument. The Kiev Metropolitan announced to the public and the authorities that the new template would be the best monument to Prince Vladimir. The Metropolitan suggested building the temple in honor of Kiev Prince Vladimir. 
The Holy Synod and Tsar Nicholas I supported Filaret's idea to build a temple. The all-national fundraiser started. Unfortunately, only 100,000 rubles were collected for its construction. Of course, it wasn't enough to build the 13-domed cathedral. According to first technical certificates, the shrine could occupy the entire block due to the constant lack of funds and miscalculation of the construction of the cathedral. It wasn't finished on time. Moreover, the St. Vladimir Cathedral looked like an unfinished building in a small area. Thirty years had passed until the Metropolitan's idea came to fruition. Six Metropolitans changed the leadership of the Holy Synod. The last dome was put in place only in 1882. It was necessary to give some time after the construction of the shrine was completed so that its foundation and walls could settle. The interior decoration of the cathedral and painting of the interior walls began only three years after the construction. It was the painting techniques that made the cathedral a world-famous masterpiece of art and culture. Problems did not appear after the completion of the construction work. The interior of the cathedral was another problem, though. Famous art historian and archaeologist Adrian Prakov began to develop the project of the cathedral, but the construction committee was against his candidacy. The Kiev authorities had their candidate who supervised paintings in the Kiev Pechersk Lavra. Prakov was not well versed in the distinctive features and nuances of Ukrainian architecture and art. Despite this, the Minister of Internal Affairs, who at that time financed the construction of the cathedral and the interior decoration works, insisted on Prakov's candidacy. So Prakov was approved by the Building Committee and the Elysiastical Archaeological Society as the head of the decoration works. He immediately began putting together a group of artists. It wasn't important for Prakov to know the monumental orthodox mural paintings. It was more important to be a well-known master with a name. Prakov proposed Repin, Gramsky, Polnov and many other artists. It was exactly these painters who were renowned in the Russian Empire whom he decided to invite. Alas, much to Prakov's disdain, they all turned down the offer as they had their own work at the time. Then Burakov decided to emphasize young artists Viktor Vasnetsov, Mikhailo Nesterov, Alexander and Pavlo Svedomsky and others received the invitation. Master of an art school, Mikola Morashko, was among the invited painters. I'm not surprised and still can't find sensible explanations why the famous painting workshop of the Kiev Chesk Lavra was ignored. None of its famous artists at that time were invited to decorate the St. Vladimir Cathedral. Rakov thought it was the right decision not to invite them. According to experts, Brakov wasn't the only one who had a negative attitude about iconographers of the Kiev Pechersk Lavra. St. Petersburg officials were also opposed. Decoration painters from the Kiev Pechersk Lavra weren't admitted to the works. There was most certainly a reason for this. All of them worked in the Ukrainian Baroque style, which appeared in the 17th century during the reign of Ukrainian hetman Ivan Mazepa. For this reason, they say Ukrainian masters should not be invited to execute the decoration works in the St. Vladimir Cathedral, designed for special celebrations and the 900th anniversary. However, some problems arose with the new skillful artists, mainly with Viktor Vasnetsov, whom Prakov wanted to see as the manager of the mural. For long, he tried to persuade the mural artist to take on the mural works in the St. Vladimir Cathedral. He stubbornly resisted. He worked for the Moscow Historical Museum. He was a specialist in historical pagan fiction and folk paintings. He was famous for his dreamy Alyonushka, legendary heroes of the pagan period in Ugro Finnish states, which later became the Moscovy Principality and then Kingdom and so on. For this reason, he also turned down the offer. Thank you.
Vaznetsov realized the great responsibility of such a task. At the same time, he wasn't sure he would cope with such work. He was afraid of comparisons with well-known Spanish and Italian masters, like, for example, Raffaello Santi. Vaznetsov believed critics would point to similarities with Raphael or Murillo. Besides, he would have to postpone his work, The Three Heroes. Viktor Vaznetsov wrote this masterpiece in a period of 10 years. Finally, Prakov returned to Kiev with nothing. Painting works in the St. Vladimir Cathedral were too attractive for Vatsnitsov. After all said and done, he sent a telegram to Kiev. If Vasily Surikov, whom Prakov also proposed to manage the painting of the murals of the shrine, turned down the offer, then Vatsnitsov decided to take up the offer. But what exactly forced the artist to change his mind? Probably his monetary situation led to his decision. Huge funds were allocated for the murals. Therefore, having many children, he agreed to take the job of the painting decorations at the St. Volodymyr Cathedral. At that time, when you could buy a cow for 15 rubles, and he was offered several thousands of rubles for the murals in the cathedral, only an idiot would turn down such an attractive offer. Almost immediately, he received a response from Kiev. Without a second thought, the artist gathered all his things and left for the Ukrainian capital for the first time. See in the next program. And he saw how this infant spread out his small arms as if he wanted to hug the whole universe. Vasnetsov, who was a very delicate and tolerant man, showed him the door in a fairly crude manner. He was so revolutionary and unusual at that time. Some people even criticized him for that character trait.